Good morning. Good morning. So, my voice is kind of worn out from talking so much yesterday. And Karen's recuperating. So, <clears throat> very much soprano bass today. We're going to sing Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng, number 813. There are seven verses, but as Karen pointed out to me, they tell a story. And uh, this, is, uh, this is our pilgrim group here, traveling through time into the Lord's house. Number 813. good to have two so that uh, one can make up for the other one mm. in different ways. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we were both struggling uh, to read the words today. One in Christ, Ephesians 2, beginning at verse 11. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus... You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two 
so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Thank you. You know how you can, <clears throat> you know how you can tell sometimes when a person's just using ordinary words, and yet you can tell you're being insulted. Oh, <laughs> you know the kind of the way a word is used. It's like, <laughs> and. Um, that's not what Paul is doing, but he's referring to an insult uh, slyly. So remember one time, you you Gentiles, uh, the the word is really, literally just nations, you nations. The Jews would call them the goy, the, the goyim, but um, uh, in Greek, ethne, uh, like we get ethnic from. And... Uh, the Gentiles would not have thought of themselves as the nations, right? If, if anything, they would have thought of themselves as the nation, Rome. Um, but uh, the nations implies that there's a nation, Israel, and then the nations. So he slips this in. You Gentiles, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, uh, that's a that's a very obvious. I mean, he's he is playing. It's called this. You've been called this by the people who who are called that. Um, he's evoking that whole uh, name calling and dismissiveness uh, on both parts. Oh, the circumcision. Oh, the uncircumcision. Um, and he's, he's raising this, this old, uh, not, I don't want to say debate, it's way more than that, this old disgust that they have for one another. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, you Gentiles, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, the commonwealth, the the, the blessing together, and strangers to the covenants, the, the good news of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And he tells them that he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. The same sermon, to those who were far off and to those who were near. Uh, Preached peace, and it's not the word for preach for for speaking, uh, laleo. It's it is uh, a word we might say we might you might translate it evangelized because it is literally he gospeled you, he good newsed you, he good newsed you peace, and so in my margin I wrote uh, good news Irene. Because that's literally the Greek word, Irene. Uh, um, I can't remember where that's from. There's a good night, Irene. Uh, it's some old, like, 1940s phrase from a movie or something. Ah. So, Only some... in your mind. <laughs> good night, Irene. Is it from a... Oh, good night, Irene. But not good news. Not new, good news, Irene. No, but it's the... You get it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> some... I... Probably nobody else cares about that. <laughs> but but good news, peace. He, he good news you peace. Uh, 
we we talk about preaching sometimes as um, you know people talk. Oh yeah, mom's preaching at me about this. Or he was when somebody is accused of preaching at you, they are speaking dismissively to you, just talking down to you. It's a shame that that image is there. But that's not what's happening here. They're, they are being lifted up by this preaching, by good newsing, peace to them. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So, so now they're not strangers anymore. They're brought together. They're fellow citizens with saints and uh, members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, this is hidden in the English. and uh, um, you got to track the grammar a bit here. Your fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation. I think that comma is not correctly placed there. The saints and members of the household of God are past tense, already done. They're built on the foundation of, of the apostles and prophets. The Gentiles, us, we're coming to the saints and, and fellow citizens. We're, um, we are now fellow citizens with these people who have been built on this foundation. That's, that's past tense, uh, past apart, having been built, it's done. But we come to that, um, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together. Now, that's present tense. Uh, this is an ongoing, it's happening, and it's, it's you're being, uh, the word is not just joined, but being placed, being Lego blocked, uh, fitted in. We are being fitted in with that which was the original done firmly founded building on Christ. And in him you are also being built together into a dwelling place. This whole division and the, uh, the battling back and forth between peoples, um, he says, that's past. He's come to preach peace to you, to, to good news peace to you. But, but this is an ongoing process of us coming back, coming more and more, coming to this original foundation and being fitted in and being built together to be an oikodomeo, a, a living place, a house for living together um, for God by the Spirit, a place for God to live by the Spirit. That's not just a place for you to live, but we are being built together into a place where God wants to be. That's, that's a turned around way of looking at it from where we often see. We want to find ourselves in a comfy place where, you know, in God's house. And that image is also used in scripture. But in this case, the, the broken pieces are being brought together and fitted together to be a place where God wants to live. Uh, I've talked to a lot of congregations who are wounded and bricks scattered, um, feeling like the building's falling apart. But, but they also are being, it's not done yet, are being brought together, fitted together, built up into a more glorious building than the one they're paying a mortgage on. Uh, something we cannot yet see, but we will. Let's pray. Oh Lord Jesus, we pray for the scattered stones, the scattered bricks. There is a time for scattering, but there's a time for gathering together, time for building up. Lord, we pray. Build up your church. By us and by others, reach out. And good news, peace to those who've been scattered by division. Bring us together and build, fit us to one another. Shape us so that we may be fit to one another. And so that we may be built up together to a church where you will dwell and from where your word will go out 
of all the broken pieces of the world. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. One of these days I'll be a tenor again. <clears throat>